With the amazing My Adventures with Superman show going all in with the Lewis and Clark, Superman and Lewis final season debuting this year and us recently getting our very first look at James Gunn upcoming Superman film starring David Cohen-Sweet and Rachel Brosnan, I think it's good time as any for that part 2 of my DCU Lois video I promised a few months ago. Now, that video was about Amy Adams' Lois as her own character, whereas this one is more focused on her relationship with her Clark slash Superman, labeled by many as quote, the worst one ever, for I wanna say many reasons but it's honestly the same whining copy and pasted over and over again. So let's get into more detail. In case you're new, hi, I'm Uncle Krypton. I started this channel talking about DCU stuff, went to focus on that battle afterwards, and I now plan to keep a nice balance between the two. So uh, subscribe if you care about either topic, that'd be nice. Now, as I said in the introduction for this series, Zack Snyder ain't really the kind of guy that goes for the cute, warm and safe stuff, preferring to let the audience decide whether someone is right or wrong. An approach that many decide to take as an affront to filmmaking and sometimes humanity as a whole. The most obnoxiously common complaint about this Lois and Clark going full force when not signed or stopping 11 fucking years later, is this idea that they quote, lack chemistry. When it comes to Clark and Lois, the two usually do have some pretty sweet moments, but it's mostly in episodic type of stories, like in TV shows or comics, areas that allow for much more quote, filler stuff. In contrast, Zack Snyder's Superman series was laid out as a 5 part story that's pretty much plot 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 all the way through, and they aren't romantic comedies, so the focus ain't gonna be on that stuff. But does that mean that this Clark and Lois had zero chemistry and are truly just some odd faces kissing each other because the plot says so? You can pretty much tell what my answer is, but I gotta plop in questions here and there to catch your attention. Chemistry between two people is defined by stuff like a connection between two individuals, a magnetic force that pulls them together, besides the script. My go-to example for a lack of chemistry in fiction couples is the movie version of Harry Potter and Ginny Weasley, who frankly have basically nothing in common, just stare at each other like dead fishes whenever they are motion their faces, and are essentially pushed together by the plot, like a kid playing with dolls. Now, I haven't read the book, so maybe they're amazing in there, but this is just what I always thought since I was a kid. But I just don't see that being the case for this Lois and Clark. I know people love to use this image where it looks like they've been held at gunpoint as a haha, see, here you go, ticket. But the films themselves just tell a different story. For starters, this Lois and Clark are quite similar in terms of personality. They're both generally patient, kind, and ethical people that will not let the drive to do what's right be deterred by things like possible personal consequences. With the main difference being Lois looking at the bigger picture where Clark looks after the little guy. Instead of the love triangle between Lois, Clark and Superman most situations go for, usually involving lots of lying and gaslighting, sincerity is in the very DNA of this couple, ever since their first encounter. Instead of a grand public gesture as Superman, Clark saves Lois as himself as they have this small, personal and beautiful moment where Clark holds her hand, calms her soothingly and proceeds to cauterize the wounds she just got from the Kryptonian robot, admitting that it's gonna hurt but still being there for her nonetheless. Just pure personal sincerity and intimacy. A mutual of mine on Twitter calls it her favorite depiction of the first encounter, honestly I, perfect, I perfectly agree. I can't imagine why someone would prefer them opening each other at the office or saving her in a public fashion over this. There's also the fact that she decided to not tell this story to the public after he opened his heart to her, denying the fame she could have gotten from that story. Or later in the film, whether they are decided by me for a moment in which Clark entrusts her with the only technical advantage she has against that, for her protection. A decision that later results in them saving each other from capture as they escape from the ship. While I agree that the chemistry in Man of Steel is at the weakest per se, being, you know, essentially strangers, it's undeniable that there are seeds for the future being planted for something to blossom. I mean, they both nearly die after saving the planet, that's gonna result in some shared trauma. There's such a level of mutual trust between the two, instead of having Lois either looking down on Clark or up at Superman, they're both so equal to one another, it honestly catches me off guard that this approach hadn't been taken yet before 2013. And no, I'm not gonna watch Smallville just to postpone this video till 2029. Speaking of time, 18 months pass since the events of Man of Steel, as they now both live in the same apartment. After a close call in the middle of a war zone, Clark comforts Lois by surprising her with flowers and planning to make dinner to surprise her, and while she appreciates the gesture, they both know Clark's first intervention in the middle of an international conflict will spark the bait, to which Clark says he doesn't care, but we all know from previous videos that this softy cares for pretty much what 
pretty much everything everyone says about him. While grateful for being saved, Lois is also analy analytical and thinks about the bigger picture, the repercussions from Superman appearing in the middle of a war zone. But all Clark has in mind is the individual, the woman he lost, and what could have happened if he didn't intervene. He then caresses her and gives her a red tulip, a gesture that, among many things, can be seen as a declaration of eternal love, meaning his response to I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if what's possible. For you to love me and be you. Is a non-verbal, well, I will always love you. Another great thing about this Clark and Lois is the long stares they have. To some, it's just them, quote, looking at each other, but what actually does is letting the emotional weight of what they're talking about and dealing with fully settle in. The two then have an absolutely precious moment as they proceed to do another kind of settling in, but to me this scene of a small, quote, chemistry that couples in entire movies and TV shows have displayed, so sorry if I don't take too seriously takes from people that sound as if they never dated anyone in their fucking lives. That's without getting into the, oh, they act more like siblings crowd, who probably have very interesting family gatherings, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Speaking of being crowded, Clark in this film is constantly faced with worldwide media scrutiny, frame with crimes he didn't commit, and chased after two pillion and maniacs trying to kill him. On top of witnessing a terrorist act he literally couldn't see coming, but feeling responsible for it nonetheless. If Clark saves Lois physically, then she saves him emotionally. She, she's here for his turmoil, his suffering, his pain, and she cradles his face, gives him the force to keep going, moment by moment. Like Clark did to her earlier in the film, when he brings up his, his doubts about what he really could have done to stop the explosion, she doesn't shut him down or silence him, nor push forward what she learned behind the scenes. She leaves rooms for his feelings even if she disagrees. Again, words cannot describe the power in this silence. On Lois' side of things, there's just something so endearing about how emotionally relieved she is every time they are reunited, clinging into him in disbelief and such. These two wear their feelings on his lips in a level of equal trust and respect, honestly pretty much unheard of for comic book movie couples, maybe except one. So yeah, I feel pretty confident saying that they, they do pretty much have chemistry, by the very definition of the term, if you value what words mean at least. But no, he doesn't have bickering, fighting, enemies to lovers, love triangle, so it's quote, missing the sauce. How about you go show the sauce down your fucking throat? The chemistry isn't talked about favorably by many because it's not explicitly awesome or centered out aww moments. Like, you know, the kind of Superman scenes where the main point is that Clark is a sweet boy who is sweet and nothing else. Obviously, these are perfectly fine, but the way some people worship these moments, while looking down at less overly sweet stuff, is like getting pissed at people for eating salad in, because you rather eat candy. Like, I love candies, they are sweet, but sweet is all they are, and you can't live off, off that alone. This type of moments is part of what the this is how you should feel type of movie direction that dominated comic book films of the 2000s. And tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. I, I don't see how that's a party. <laughs> do you guys just not have horror movies in Wakanda? We don't need them. We have American reality shows. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Mostly those who aimed at the largest audience possible, mainly children, with jokes that even they couldn't miss. And much to the front of grown ass people, Snyder, Snyder simply didn't have kids as the main target demographic in mind. Sister criticism to the old no chemistry thingy is the idea that this Clark and Lois have no reason to love one another outside of the script saying so. Again, they aren't protagonist of a romantic comedy, so the why of why they love each other isn't gonna be the focus. But that doesn't mean it's absent. The thing about Clark is that he's had to live his entire life keeping his true nature a secret, having only his parents be aware of his true nature. Lois was the first person besides Martha and Jonathan to put her trust in him, deciding to not share his story, being a celebrity. She could have made lots of money and simply chose not to. That's gonna leave an impact on Clark. She knew the old truth about him and still chose to believe in him, to give him the hope that maybe humanity will do too. He says so himself. Lois knows more about Clark than anyone else not related to him. He can be himself freely with her after a life of secrecy. Like, you realize how much pent up energy that has to give to a person. It's like an emotional world of cardboard. She's the first person that sees him as a full person instead of a child in need of protection, a pathetic hero, an alien or a monster. It's just Clark. She sees 
and that's all she sees. She grew to understand and love them. To Clark, Lois embodies everything great about humanity, the idea that there will always be good worth fighting for even in the darkest hour. Now, while it is rather obvious to see why Clark would fall in love with Lois, why Lois would fall in love with Clark has been terribly misinterpreted to go for an understatement. You probably already heard the question, who is the true identity between Clark and Superman? Well, it honestly depends on the writer, story, and most importantly, era. In the Civil Rights slash pre-crisis period, Superman was the real deal, where Clark was just a disguise he put on. In the post-crisis period, is the exact opposite, meaning Clark is the real person and Superman is something he puts on. The Donner films were obviously much more on the pre-crisis side of things, while Snyder's more on the post-crisis. This is an important distinction to keep in mind because, according to people who only value Superman based on a character approach that even his leading actor got tired of, um, I felt that after two films worth of bumping into doors, by now I should know where the doors are, um, and the elevators and uh, the street crossings. Uh, it's a bore to watch somebody be a klutz all If Lois doesn't find love with Clyde when he's putting the bumbly needed facade on a daily planet, then she doesn't love Clyde. She loves Superman. Applying pre-crisis measurements to post-crisis material makes as much sense as trying to measure the height of a building with a fucking thermometer. The films present the exact opposite of what they're accused of, with Lois falling for Clark, the wandering Samaritan, the one who was there when she needed it, the one who, op who opened his heart to her, the one that entrusted her to set the planet with. Instead of falling for a disguise, Lois loves all side of Clark for who he truly is. Then you got morons saying she, ve she fell in love with his powers. Sure, then a big leap alligator around the final fight with Zod while you were at it. Lois shits Clark emotionally as much as does to her physically, showing that she doesn't care about just the god. Unlike... Uh, we'll get to that soon enough. Like, these people get rewarded with thousands and thousands of likes and tweets weekly for takes like this because this one fucking image apparently spells a more complete picture than the films. Speaking of films, there is no chemistry whatsoever between Lois and Superman in the first Donner movie. As Clark, she just annoys him at best and bullies him at worst, for reasons we went over in the previous DC or Lois Lane video. Whereas with Superman, it's all just very awkward stares and exchanges, with there being no given reason for why Clark would go against Kryptonian law for her. It honestly feels as if it's the it's only Lois and Clark because it's a thing in the comics that people accuse Snyder films of doing. Instead of kissing as a release of emotions after a shared traumatic event, sacrifices and emotional experiences, they're ready to kiss at their third encounter, fourth if you count time travel stuff. And by the sixth encounter in the sequel, he's ready to give up his powers entirely for her, a character who always stays outside of the main plot instead of being part of it unless they need to fridge her or erase memories. It comes off a really out of left field. This Lois acts like a giggling schoolgirl whenever Superman smiles at her, basically more akin to a crush than any actual attraction, and this method of quote, chemistry has been carried over to most comic book films since then, where it's the same formula, you know, awkward chuckling, stuttering, looking like they want to jump at each other, with Kevin Feige even confirming they use Superman 78 as a template. Maybe this shaped the idea that this is what chemistry looks like, but this is literally how this or this pre romantic interest to children, because they need things to be overt as possible. It's basically one step away from one character seeing the other in a pink filter full of flowers. So of course when Lois and Clark act like an actual adult couple, people get confused. Well, that was then. What about the latest live action Superman Lois in the show on the same name? They're honestly pretty great. Outstanding performances for both Clark and Lois. In fact, they're two my second favorite versions for both in terms of live action adaptations. And of course, also perfect tools for Snyder and this to kick the same dead doors over and over again. Now, in this show, there are an happily married couple that's been together for decades, raising two sons, no less. It's kind of pretty fucking stupid to compare them to the DCU, Lois and Clark, who are the very different, but not beyond which, part of their relationship. It's useless to argue about how one, quote, does it better when they're aiming for different kinds of, quote, it. But much like fans of the Super Superman idea, aka either is the very avatar of perfection and also or it's not Superman, slash great Superman and what's, uh, etc. 
many can't seem to grasp the idea of something existing in any form besides this most exaggerated one. Like for example, infantilized portrayal of what romance is like, stuff made for kids so that even they couldn't miss it, and thus you got people saying stuff like Clark and Lloyd seeing super pets being the best they ever been in a film since the 80s. Like, like give me a fucking break, okay? Speaking of, there's another live action Lloyd that I haven't mentioned yet, the one in Superman Returns. Walton receives criticism very similar to Adam's portrayal, and as my Twitter mutual Kenny pointed out, it's very interesting how the two allegedly worse slash miscast cinematic Lois Lanes are also the only big screen iterations who are evenly tempered, competent at their job, track down the villain's location and schemes, and save Superman's life. While the quote, perfect Lois Lane from 78 is the one who doesn't do a single one of those things, but instead does no actual reporting, less common sense or tactical approaching people she needs info from, and acts like a giggling schoolgirl and Superman because he's hot. And sure, she gets much better in the sequel, but the relationship with Clark still springboarded off a lie. And honestly, this honesty is my biggest gripe with this whole topic. There's nothing wrong with his like in a certain adaptation, but to describe it in an objectively wrong fashion, only to hype up the iteration that actually fits the label you're slapping on the former, to me is nothing but projection in the name of nostalgia that deserves to be called out instead of supported. I'm honestly not even as viciously antagonistic towards Gun Superman film like many fellow Snyder fans seem to be, but seeing people already call this quote the best Lois and Clark simply because she's wearing purple and they're smiling at each other in a set photo, it honestly doesn't give me much hope for a future where people assess these characters beyond visual tokens and nostalgia goggles, but I'll keep on hoping. Anyway, do leave below your thoughts on your favorite Lois Lane actress, drink lots of water and I'll do the same. Uncle Krypton, hoping that I made your day slightly better.